Welcome to another episode of IBI On Site. I'm your host, Hayden Grove, and joining me today early this time, last time we couldn't get together with all the draft stuff going on, but joining me today is Tony Lasoria, the creator of IBI. And Tony, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing over the last couple of days. Yeah, it's been insane with the draft. I mean, ever since Thursday, uh, the Indians had four first day picks, took four pretty good players. But the draft doesn't just stop after they make the picks. There's a lot. Of, there's a whole signing process because it's getting in touch with guys, um, asking questions. You know, maybe sometimes picking a little bit more than you should. But it, it is what it is. But it's just it's it's a process. Like all week, that's all I've been pretty much doing is just covering draft stuff. And hopefully, I'm kind of at the tail end of it. I can kind of back into this stuff, my right. honing value, like counting those kind of things, and really start diving back into the minor league stuff. Now, speaking of which, we are here at Mahoning Valley at Eastwood Field in Niles, Ohio, where the Scrappers are starting their 2014 season. And uh, you've told me a couple of interesting names that you're looking out for this season, starting with Kieran Lovegrove. But what is he going to bring to the table? Yeah, you know, this is his first time out at an actual field. I mean, like, you know, they play out in Arizona, extended spring, spring training games, rookie ball games. They're all at the complex. It's, it's, it's complex league. So now he's playing in front of fans for the first time. Several of these guys will be doing that. Uh, he's chomping at the bit. He's ready to get out there and, and start playing in front of people. Um, you know, being in Arizona for two years, pretty much. He got drafted two years ago, so he's been in Arizona since then. He had a couple of guys like uh, um, uh, Mejia as well, and a couple other guys that have been there for a while. It's this. It's an opportunity to get out there and start playing and really start kind of like letting the reins go a little bit, let him kind of show what he can do. Because he spent the last two years kind of building that foundation, uh, getting stronger, working on his mechanics, uh, working on his pitches, you know, working in the mental kind of game. You know, it's such a foundational thing with those, especially those high school guys or those raw guys coming out of college or junior college, in some cases college, that now we're going to see a whole people put together. But look, this guy's got... He's got the goods. I mean, he's got. He's an amazing makeup guy. I mean, he's probably one of my favorite guys to talk to. Uh, he's got, you know, up to 97 mile an hour fastball. He's, you know, he's low 90s, the mid 90s guy where he'll sit. He's got some, some good um, all speed stuff, and he's got the frame that you like out of a starter. So we're gonna see how it goes. Now there are some other guys that you talked about too. Maybe touch on them a little bit about some of these guys who are gonna really gonna show out here in, in Mahoning Valley. Well, the one guy that people should really pay attention to out here is Francisco Mejia. He's the catcher, um, top five prospect in the organization. He's a little guy, so he's kind of unassuming. Like when you when you go out there, you're going to go, okay, this guy is a top prospect. But when you watch him play, and you got to watch him a couple of times. When you watch him, you're going to come away very impressed. Lightning quick bat, uh, very good hands at the plate. Uh, he's got some good deceiving power for his size. I, I, I liken him as he kind of grows up, almost like to a Carlos Santana kind of build, uh, maybe getting that 5'10", 5'11 range, and uh, you know, maybe more of a shorter, stockier kind of guy. But the goods are behind the plate. And this guy, I mean, I was just talking to Teddy Kubiak, and I asked him, what do you think about Mejia? He said he thinks he's the best catcher throwing-wise he's ever seen. I go, what, minors? He goes, no, minors and majors. I go, well, he played in the majors. He played in you know, Oakland or whatever it was, World Series team in the 70s. And he's been around the block. He's been around this game for like 40 or 50 years or whatever. And that's pretty high accomplished, a, a, a pretty, pretty high um, comments coming from him. And uh, so, and, and I don't deny it because he's got an amazing lightning quick ball to, to second and an absolute cannon. So this is an exciting guy to watch, to watch him kind of maybe see what he does, shutting down the running game for the opposing team, getting a chance to throw a little bit, get in front of fans for the first time. And then also maybe I hope that he goes out there and kind of produces with the bat. But it's important to note these are high school kids or high school level equivalent guys. Don't get too caught up in the numbers. It's about building a foundation here and having a, a solid year to kind of build up and go next year. Now, any other studs that you were looking at? You were talking to me about a guy named Brady. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, it's a story about Neyman Brady, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, Sean Brady. I mean, this guy got drafted last year, top uh, fifth or fourth or fifth pit the pick uh, last year. I keep I, I forget offhand, but uh, lefty pitcher. You know, not a big physical guy, but very strongly built, amazing confidence on the mound. I mean, I think that's what the Indians really like about him, that he knows what he's doing out there. Nothing phases him, and uh, he's in control out there. He's got a pretty good uh, – his, his, his command is very good. Uh, it's, you know, he's, he's got good stuff. This is a guy they're going to develop as a lefty starter. I think this is probably behind Mejia and, uh, and even Lovegrove. This is uh, one of the top prospects here to kind of keep your eye on. And he's going to start, and they're going to give him a chance to see what he can do. I think this guy, if he has a really good showing here, I think he can finish here in Lake County. Now, the Mahoning Valley roster is always evolving, always moving, because a lot of these draft picks sign and come up here. Who do you think we're going to see at the scrappers level that we just drafted a couple days ago? 
Yeah, you know, well, they just drafted a, a Julian, Ma- the, Julian Merriweather, uh, fifth round pick. He's going to be here. I think he's going to get here um, sometime over the weekend. Um, probably by the time this, this airs, he'll already be here. Uh, the um, tenth round pick, Patterson, is another senior guy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's here. It's going to be mostly the college guys. Some of the junior guys, none of the high school guys are going to be here. I think, you know, Justice Chef. It, even the top guys, like Justice Sheffield and uh, Grant Hawke and those kind of guys, they're going to go to Arizona. They're going to get their work in, build themselves up, and get ready to play. But you're going to see more of those college-level boys, uh, guys, that are going to come here. Um, trying to think offhand who might uh, else uh, be here. Uh, Greg Allen, the six-round pick, when he signs, uh, he's probably, probably going to – he may start in Arizona because they're going to be kind of full here. But a lot of those – guys in the top 20 rounds are going to um, eventually get here and play a meaningful amount of games here this year. Now, finally, I just wanted to touch on a little bit because you weren't able to join us last week. What are your impressions with the first couple picks of Zimmer and Sheffield? I mean, those are two of the guys that really, and even Mike Poppy. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of fun when you have four first-day picks. So last year, they had, the, they had the one pick fifth overall, and they were done. Yeah. So they had to kind of sit around for the next 60 picks and then wait to the next day to kind of get back involved in the draft. This year, they didn't pick till 21, and they had, you know, 31, 38, 61. So they were constantly involved with the draft all the way through. And the one thing I constantly heard is is those guys that were like 15 to 60, they're all kind of interchangeable, all those kind of on draft boards. You know, every team sees things differently. So the Indians feel very confident. They've got three guys that may have been, you know, that were very high on their board. They won't say how high they were on their board. But guys that may have been a top 30, top 40 guy on most boards, they got them all on the first day like that. So, you know, Sheffield's a very uh, promising lefty. Um, And that's the thing, too, is this year they kind of, did a little bit of a change with their philosophy. I got a Q&A with John Mirabelli we're going to post up uh, this week uh, that he kind of talks about some of the changes they made with the high school pitching, especially in the upper right. parts of the draft, where they're going a little bit more for pitchability and now stuff versus arm strength and so much projection and raw where there's so much potential for miss. Right. And we've seen that in the past with right. some of the guys. I mean, I'm not going to name all the guys, but there's so many guys they've taken over the last four, five, six, seven drafts in those top four, four or five rounds that had amazing potential but haven't materialized. So I think we, you know, they changed their process a little, a little bit, and he's very confident, Mirabelli and, you know, Grant, when I've talked to him, they're very confident about what they've been able to accomplish this year in this draft. I mean, they're going to be confident every year, but especially this year, they really think they got the process right. And, you know, injuries are the great separator. You never know how that's going to happen. But if these guys stay healthy and they develop like they think, they think they got a good crop of guys coming out of this draft. All right, well, there you have it, Mr. Tony Lestoria, creator of IBI and one of the best draft gurus around. Thanks so much for coming on with us today. All right, thanks a lot. All right, when we get back, we'll talk to some of these scrappers, including some guys we just talked about right now. Stay tuned. This is Jim Piasek, uh, promoing uh, my new feature on IBI. It's uh, called the War Room, and it's going into the advanced metrics uh, of the minor league team, looking at things like uh, walk rate plus, strikeout rate plus, war, all those numbers, uh, but putting it in language you can understand, going the next level in understanding what's going on with the minor league system. You can check it out every Sunday on IBI. And welcome back to IBI on site. I'm now joined by two scrappers who are kind of new to the system, new to things here in East or in East Lake, excuse me, in Youngstown with the scrappers. I'm here with Kieran Lovegrove, pitcher, and Mr. Garrett Smith. I got his name wrong earlier. I want to get it right this time. What is exciting to you guys about this being here in uh, Mahoning Valley for your first Ohio experience? I guess you could say. I'm excited to get in front of a crowd. Uh, this is my first time out of Arizona, so getting in front of a couple thousand people, I think, is going to be a pretty good experience for all of us. And you? Yeah, the atmosphere is huge. Uh, I'm excited to make a play and actually have a reaction. That'll be cool. Um, yeah, very excited to get started. Now, being in Arizona, what kind of things did you experience over there do you, that you feel is going to help you coming to this level? Um, you know, in Arizona, you really have to just focus on yourself. There's, there's no outside distraction, and I think that allows you to really know who you are as a player. Uh, so I think coming in here, just being able to relax on the mound and pitch is probably going to help. And for you? Uh, facing pitchers with high velocity that don't necessarily know where it's going, um, including him who hit me in practice. So it just <laughs> just getting used to just the speed and, and it's it could come anywhere at any time. 
Now, I know you guys out in Arizona, I'm sure you focus a lot on development and just, you know, the little things that make you a better baseball player. What are you expecting here that's going to be a lot different in terms of your routine? Um, in terms of routine, I, I tend to keep it pretty simple. I don't want to overdo things. Uh, just getting ready to start going out there, throwing my eight pitches, and then going into a game. You know, I'm not going to try and overthink it. I'm not going to try and do any superstitions. I'm just going to go and pitch. Any routine for you? Um, I mean, as baseball players, we are creatures of habit, and it's just going to be the same but later in the day because we're used to getting up early and getting games done in the middle of the day in the 115 degrees. So here it'll be a little nicer and uh, just push our routine back a couple hours and get ready to go. Now, both of you guys are California kids, as we, you said before we turned the camera on. Uh, what kind of things are you going to be excited about about being in Ohio, and what's going to be different from obviously coming all the way over from California? Trees. <laughs> Trees. Um, it's strange driving on the highway and not having any sort of landmark of ocean or mountains or anything. It's just trees. But uh, I like it. It's a good change of pace. And you? Um, the weather is different. Right now it's actually kind of nice, but the humidity will definitely take its toll. Um, but yeah, it's just it's fun to be in a new scene and uh, play in a new place, and it's just fun to have a new experience. So you're saying that it's more humid here than it is in California? Yes. I, we both live pretty much on the ocean, and it is perfect year round so it's an adjustment <laughs> all right well i guess the, i'm coming i'm from florida originally so i guess coming from florida the humidity plays a big factor there i find it way less humid here than in florida so i don't know uh, i can i can imagine i've been to florida in june and that was brutal to me um but i was also just back in california for a few days and it was 80 on the beach every day no clouds yeah. All right, so we obviously could talk about the weather all day, but we, I want to find out some new things about you guys. What are some things that you can tell the fans in Northeast Ohio that maybe they wouldn't know about you coming in? Um, I was born in South Africa, and I mean, that's kind of my calling card right now, and that's my goal is to be the first African-born major leaguer. Um, that's, that's my big thing. All right, we got an African major leaguer, or potential African major leaguer, and what about you? Um... I don't know. I'm a big action sports guy. I like to surf and skate. I used to be sponsored for skateboarding. Um, so I think that's actually helped me a lot in footwork and quickness and shiftiness in baseball. And yeah. Are you allowed to skateboard still with, you know, being uh, baseball? I don't, I don't because I don't want to mess anything up. I definitely still surf because that's swimming and that's good strength and for your core and all of that. But uh, skating is a little different. But. Now, finally, as you guys head to the to this next level, what's going to be the biggest adjustment and the thing that you're going to focus on most? Um, to me, it's just keeping a level head, just not trying to get too high, get too low. Um, physically, I feel prepared, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm just going to go out there and pitch. Um, yeah, like Kieran said, uh, just as long as you stay humble, I think, uh, and work hard, the game will, will reward you and respect you, and uh, just got to stick with the routine and keep doing what you do. All right, well, so Kieran Lovegrove, Garrett Smith, thanks so much for coming on today, and uh, we'll be right back with more from ABI Onsite. Hi, I'm Tony Lestoria from Indians Baseball Insider. The season has now begun, and, and, and the new IBI prospect book is available. Check out the 2014 Indians Baseball Insider book online at IndiansBaseballInsider.com or go to Amazon.com or check out the captains and other Indians minor league affiliates for information on the, on the book. Welcome back to IBI On Site. I'm joined now by the 2012 fourth round pick of the Indians, Devon McClure. How does it feel to be in Mahoning Valley? Oh, it feels great. Played two summers in Arizona, you know, so I was just excited to get here. You know, it's a great environment, great stadium, great people. Just excited to play here. Now, being from Arkansas, does this remind you at all of home? Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, in Arizona, there's like not many trees. There's a lot of dirt. And I mean, it's humid here like it is in Arkansas, and I see a lot of trees and grass. I really like it. All right, now being in Arizona for two se or parts of two seasons, what did you learn? What did you learn while you were there? Well, most of all, I learned myself. You know, I learned what I had to do to be consistent day in and day out. I improved on what I needed to improve on. It was great for me. It was big for me. Now, how did that help you to prepare for this level, for the next level of big league baseball? I mean, say, I mean, I know myself. I know what to go back to if things are going wrong, you know. If I start struggling, I know what to go back to or what to get me right back on path. Is there something in Arizona, did you develop a kind of routine over there that's going to get you ready and that you're going to start doing here? Yeah, I mean, I definitely developed a routine. I like to get my hands going in the morning, in the cage, get out early, pepper the ball to right field and BP. It's kind of just what I do to get myself ready for the game. 
Now, what do you think you can bring here to this team? Do you, what do you what do you want to bring to the Scrappers? I want to bring energy and just just lay back play. You know, not not lazy at all. Just having fun out there while we're playing. Now, speaking of having fun, I talked to Josh McAdams last year. He said he's a good friend of yours. Can you describe your relationship a little bit? Yeah, McAdams, that's my boy, man. You know, I called some McDouble back in Arizona. A McDouble? Yeah, I missed All him right. back home. You know, yeah. I mean, we're pretty good friends. We've gotten close to each other over the last few years. We roomed a lot together. Yeah, we're definitely pretty good boys. Now, of course, we're talking about Josh McAdams, left fielder for the Scrappers here this season. Uh, finally, what do you want to tell fans of Northeast Ohio that may not know a lot about you? What kind of game? What kind of game do you play, and what kind of things are you going to bring to the table? I mean, I just go hard. That's all you can expect out of me. I'm gonna go hard every day. All right, and anything like off kilter that you might want to tell the fans, like anything that they wouldn't know about you? Uh, um, I'm probably the nastiest freestyler on this side of the country. <laughs> okay, a little rapping. Can you give us anything right now? <laughs> oh, I don't know if I got anything right now. All right, all right, we'll, we'll let you off the hook. But thanks so much for coming on today, and uh, best of luck this season. I got you. Thank you. That's going to do it for this episode of IBI On Site, but be sure to look out for another episode coming next week as we take you through another location within the Indians organization. Until then, I'm Hayden Grove. We'll catch you next time.